Vibhavari shesha aloka provesha nidra chari uta jiva Vibhavari shesha aloka provesha Nidra Chari Uta Jeeva Bolo Hare Hare Mokunda Morare Rama Krishna Haya Kriva Bolo Hare Hare Mokunda Morari Rama Krishna Haya Kriva Narsimhavamana Shri Madhusudana Prajendra Nandana Shama Narsimhavamana Shri Madhusudana Prajendra Nandana Shama Putana Gatana Kaitabashatana Jaya Dasarati Rama Putana Gatana Kaitabashatana Jaya Dasarati Rama Yashoda Dula Lao Govinda Gopala Vrindavana Purandara Yashoda Dula Lao Govinda Gopala Vrindavana Purandara Ara Gopi Priya Janna Radhika Ramana Bhuvana Sundara Bhara Jana Radhika Ramana Bhavana Sundara Bhara Ravana Thakura Makana Thaskara Gopi Jana Vashtrahari Ravana 
Ravanata Kora Makanataskara Gopi Janavashtra Hari Brajera Rakala Gopa Vrinda Pala Chitta Hari Vamsi Dahari Brajera Rakala Gopa Vrinda Pala Chitta Hari Vamsi Dahari Yogindra Vandana Srinanda Nandana Praja Janna Bhaya Hare Yogindra Bandhana Srinanda Nandhana Praja Janna Bhaya Hare Nabi Nani Radha Rupa Mano Hara Mohana Vamsi Bihare Nabi Nani Radha Rupa Mano Hara Mohana Vamsi Bihare Yashodanandana Kamsa Nishudhana Nikunja Rasa Vilasi Yashodanandana Kamsa Nishudhana Nikunja Rasa Vilasi Kadamba Kanana Rasa Parayana Vrinda Vipina Nivasi Kadamba Kanana Rasa Parayana Vrinda Vipina Nivasi Ananda Vardhana Prima Niketana Pulashara Yojaka Kama Ananda Vardhana Prima Niketana Pulashara Yojaka Kama
Gopanganagana Chitta Vinodana Samasta Gunagana Dhamma Gopanganagana Chitta Vinodana Samasta Guna Gana Dhamma Yamuna Jeevana Keli Parayana Manasa Chandra Chakora Yamuna Jeevana Keli Parayana Manasa Chandra Chakora Namashura Ras Goa Krishna Yash Rako Vachanamana Mora Namashura Ras Goa Krishna Yash Rako Vachanamana Mora Vibhavari Shesha Aloka Provesha Nidra Chedi Yukta Jeeva Bolo Hare Hare Mokunda Morari Rama Krishna Haya Kriva Nittai Gaur Haribo 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 Nittai Gaur Haribo Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskrityam Naram Chaiva Narottamam Devim Sarasatim Vyasam Tato Jayamudirayat Nesta Prayeshu Vabhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttamash Loke Bhakti Bhavati Nishtaki We're reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 7, The Son of Drona Punished, text number 36. Matam, Matam, Pramatam, 
Matam careless, pramatam intoxicated, unmatam insane, suptam asleep, balam boy, striyam woman, jadam foolish, prapanam surrendered, viratam. One who has lost his chariot. Bitam, afraid. Na, not. Ripum, enemy. Hanti, kill. Dharmavit, one who knows the principles of religion. Translation. <coughs> A person who knows the, prin the principles of religion does, does not kill an enemy who is careless, intoxicated, insane, asleep, afraid, or devoid of his chariot. Nor does he kill a boy, a woman, a foolish creature, or a surrendered soul. You could repeat, a person who knows the principles of religion does not kill an enemy who is careless, intoxicated, insane, asleep, afraid or devoid of his chariot. 
nor does he kill a boy, a woman, a foolish creature, or a surrendered soul, purport by Srila Prabhupada. An enemy who does not resist is never killed by a warrior who knows the principles of religion. Formerly, battles were fought on the principles of religion and not for the sake of sense gratification. If the enemy happened to be intoxicated, asleep, etc., as above mentioned, he was never to be killed. These are some of the codes of religious war. Formerly, war was never declared by the whims of such political leaders. It was carried out on religious principles, free from all vices. Violence carried out on religious principles is far superior to so-called non-violence. Om Ajnana Timarandasya Kyanam Jana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militan Yenatasma Shri Guru Vanchakau Patarubhyas Chakri Vasindu Bhai Vacha Patita Nam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnavi Bhyo Namo Nama Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nichananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasa De Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. So Ashwatthama had, Ashwatthama had come in the night and killed the sleeping sons of Draupadi and then he'd released the master weapon, tried to kill the child in the womb of Uttara and then Arjuna chased him, Ar Aswatthama ran away and Arjuna chased him and captured him and bound him up like an animal and brought him back. So Lord Krishna is now speaking and he's instructing Arjuna on what should be done, what, to, what should be done in such a situation because Aswatthama had acted totally against the principles of religion. We read in this pur verse and purport the different conditions in which a person should never be harmed, in which they should be protected. And Ashwatthama, he'd gone against these principles. He'd gone in the night, so people were asleep and he killed young boys, the sleeping sons of Draupadi. Draupadi had five sons, one by each of the Pandavas, and Ashwatthama came in the night and killed them. So that was totally against religious principles. Kshatriyas, according to religious principles, they will fight, but they will fight someone they'll give them equal weapons. It's not that they will come armed with weapons and fight someone who has no weapons, as is done today in warfare. Today in warfare, they will send airplanes over to bomb towns and where women and children are living. They don't have any chance of defending themselves, but this is how they fight their wars today. It's not at all according to religious principles. Srila Prabhupada was in the park, one park, I can't remember which country it was anyway, huh? but uh, there was a statue of Vikings. Vikings are these uh, fierce warriors who come from Scandinavia. And they had these big helmets on with big horns and big swords, you know. And so a devotee asked Prabhupada, are these Kshatriyas Prabhupada? Jai, Radha Madhava. 
They asked Prabhupada, are these Kshatriyas? Prabhupada said, no, they're demons. <laughs> he said, do they, because if they're Kshatriyas, they would go to heaven. He said, no, they don't go to heaven, they go to hell. And today, when they fight the wars, the military sites, do they, are they Kshatriyas? No. And do they get liberated? No. Where do they go? They go to hell, both sides both sides so that's the nature of warfare today it's not a pleasant business uh, there are codes of religious principles for fighting people should be equally matched if someone has a sword then the opponent should be given a sword so that he can fight also if someone is asleep they should not be killed if someone is intoxicated, or if someone surrenders, they should not be killed. Just as in Srimad Bhagavatam, we have the personality of Kali, and he's uh, confronted by Maharaj Parikshit. Maharaj Parikshit was ruling the earth, and he was going around his kingdom, making sure that everyone was following the codes of religion and he came across the personality of Kali. And the personality of Kali was dressed like a king. Although he was obviously a sudra, he was dressed like a king with a, th you know, a crown and ornaments like a king. And not only that, but there was a cow with tears in her eyes and a bull was standing on only a portion of one leg. So when Maharaj Parikshit saw this scene, he was astonished because he had never seen anywhere that there was ever a cow mistreated. So he was just, more, he was just shocked. So he was ready to immediately kill that personality of Kali. But the personality of Kali surrendered to him. And because he surrendered to Maharaj Parikshit, so Maharaj Parikshit did not kill him. He, but he gave him conditions. He said, you can only reside where there is intoxication, gambling, meat eating, or illicit sex. But then the personality of Kali said, then I, ho I will have nowhere to stay because you are ruling and you do not allow these things. It's, there's nowhere where these activities are going on. And so you, you're, you're giving me concession, but it's not a concession because there's no place to live. So Maharaj Pariksha said, then you can live wherever there is hoarding of gold. Because wherever there is hoarding of gold, then these sinful activities will come. Wherever people have too much wealth, they become inclined to these kind of sinful activities. Intoxication, gambling, meat eating, and illicit sex. And we see this everywhere. Where there is economic development, people have more wealth, and with more wealth, they simply engage in sinful activities. They don't know how to use the wealth. But proper use of wealth is to build temples like this for the worship of the Lord. That is the proper way to use wealth. Unfortunately, the number of people who will do that with their wealth are very few. So there are rules under which people can fight. And Prabhupada says, violence according to religious principles is much superior to non-violence. You know, the Buddhists speak about non-violence, ahimsa. That is not the highest principle of religion. 
they think it is. They don't know anything higher because the Buddhas are atheists. They don't believe in God. They simply believe the world is unreal. Right? So take a brick and smash them over the head and say, it's unreal. Right? Just take a brick and hit them on the head. It's unreal. <laughs> you, I, so we're speaking about codes of religion. We have to follow codes of religion. It's very important. In the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 16, describes the divine and the demoniac nature. Daivi Sampat and Asuric Sampat. So the demons are described that Pavritim Cha Nivritim Cha Janana Vidur Asuraha that those who are demons they do not know what should be done and what should not be done. They don't know what should be pravriti and what should be nivriti. We have to teach them that. The Krishna consciousness movement educates people about what is actually pa uh, pavriti and what should be nivriti. And Prabhupada explains uh, becoming a devotee in Krishna consciousness means to understand properly what should be done. What should be done? Chanting Hare Krishna, serving Krishna, devotional service. And what should not be done? Intoxication, gambling, meat eating, and illicit sex. These things, that these things have to be stopped. So that is the nivriti. No, Prabhupada said, no nonsense. No nonsense. No nonsense means all this meat, intoxication, gambling, illicit sex. This is all the nonsense. That all has to be stopped. That is actually the codes of religion. But people are ignorant today. They don't know what are actually the real codes of religion. And we see also in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes, by practicing the regulative principles of religion, one can attain freedom. So, people don't understand that, that you know, they, they sometimes condemn the Krishna consciousness movement. Oh, you people, you have so many rules. You have so many rules and regulations. They do not understand the value of these rules and regulations. We are educating people. <laughs> but it's a very difficult task. People don't like this kind of education. You tell them, don't do that. Don't do this. Don't do that. I was trying to make life members some years ago in Hong Kong, and I went to one business one office the man there he told me he said he said you know i'm a vegetarian i've been a vegetarian all my life he said it's terrible <laughs> he said he said you know when my customers because he was a businessman so he had customers come and he was like a import export agent so customers come to him and they want him to get goods from, for them from ch somewhere like China. And so the customers come and the customer comes from a foreign country and they come to Hong Kong and the mood is, you know, you take them out for a meal. You go out for a meal to a restaurant. But he said, when my customers come, I cannot go with them to the restaurant because I cannot eat meat. 
He said, it's terrible. <laughs> you know, when I first, when he first told me I'd been a vegetarian all my life, I'm thinking, oh, you're so lucky. You're so fortunate. He said, no, I'm so unlucky. <laughs> Foolish person, you see. He was thinking that he's unlucky. He could not understand his good fortune. People often don't appreciate the value of this kind of culture. Mm. There was another incident. There was this woman. Uh, this was in China, actually. There was a woman. So she, she was a young woman, but somehow her husband died. He had some health problem, and she lost her husband. So she was still in her 30s, and she had no child. So another lady said to her, you know, you should get married again. You know, you can find another husband, and you could still have a child. You're not so old yet. So sh this other woman somehow introduced her to a man who was also interested in Krishna consciousness a little bit. She was a devotee, and he was a little interested in Krishna consciousness. So they, they kind of made some friendship, but then the man got tired of, of being with the, this woman. He said, you have too many rules and regulations. He said, I don't want to, to be with you because you're too strict. You have too many rules and regulations. So Prabhupada explains rules and regulations are for civilized society. The more cultured and civilized a person is, the more they will have rules and regulations. Uncivilized people, they cannot follow rules and regulations. Just like in a country you have laws. The laws are for the people. The laws are not for the animals. You cannot tell the dog, you cannot do this, dog. My dear dog, you're breaking the law. <laughs> dog, you can't do that. No. The dogs, there are no laws for the a animals. The laws are for people. And the more advanced and more civilized people become, the more there are laws and restrictions. And these things are purifying. They elevate us to the mode of goodness. And from the mode of goodness, we can transcend and come to Krishna consciousness. So we have to understand the importance of religious principles. Just like here, Prabhupada is talking about the religious principles. In the battle of Kurukshetra, in the beginning, they were following religious principles. It was a Dharma Yud. Dharma Kshetri Kurukshetri. Right? They'd gone to Kurukshetra. It's a religious battle. And Prabhupada said, for the Kshatriyas, fighting is, the, is equal to the Brahmana performing a Yagya. A Brahmana does a yagya, and the same way the Kshatriya is there, yagya is fighting. And of course, they, they should fight to die on the battlefield. Uh, it is said, there's a, there's a story, there was one Kshatriya king, he'd gone to a battle with his army, and he came back alone. And so he came back to his palace, and the door was locked. So he called, open the door. I'm your husband. I've come home. So the, the wife said, where's your army? He said, I've been defeated. Army is all gone. So the wife said, you cannot be my husband. My husband, either he dies on the battlefield or he wins the battle. He does not come home defeated. You must be an imposter. I'm not opening the door to you. So that is Vedic culture. 
Either you die on the battlefield or you win the battle, but you don't go home defeated. And you must go forward, you must be going forward. You cannot go back. There's a picture in a big palace in Jaipur. Two Kshatriyas are fighting, you know, and one, one man's got the sword that's stuck in him. And the other man, well, well, the man with the sword in him, he's trying to hit the other man. The sword is in him, but he's moving forward to try to hit the other man. Even though he's moving forward and the sword is going more into him, he wants to hit the other man. Because he has that mood that he must go forward. To die on your back is not glorious. You must be going forward. It's a disgrace for a Kshatriya to die going back, retreating. So that is the, the Dharma of the Kshatriyas. They fight like that in that mood. And there are principles. But although in the beginning at Kurukshetra War they were following the principles, the battle degraded. Abhimanu had learned the art of breaking through the chakra formation. So the Kauravas had made, made the chakra formation and they were fighting and killing all the Pandavas army. But Abhimanu, he knew how to get into that chakra and he got in, he broke into the chakra and he's fighting. But he didn't know how to get out. He had only heard how to get in. He was just a young man, teenage man. So he got into the chakra, but he couldn't get out. And so while he was in the chakra, he got defeated. He got surrounded by many Maharatis. They all surrounded him. And then they killed him. Not one person. It wasn't one to one. They killed him in an irreligious manner against the codes of religion. So later on, Karna was fighting Arjun. And Karna's chariot got stuck in the mud. And Karna's chariot stuck in the mud, and there's Arjuna coming to kill. And Karna's saying, look, come on, my chariot is stuck in the mud. It's not fair. But Arjuna said, there was no mercy to Abhimanu. There'll be no mercy now. Tit for tat, we see. So Arjuna killed Karna in this way. Because... They didn't follow, the Kauras, the Kauravas didn't follow the codes of religion. So the Pandavas said, we're also not going to follow codes of religion. So in this way, <laughs> that's the nature of the Dharma Yud that can easily degrade into something else. You see also in the sixth canto, Vritasura and the demons are fighting the demigods. So Vritasura had such a huge form, he was so f huge and ferocious. When the demons came to attack the demigods, the demigods all ran away. And so Vritasura is saying, come on, you, you people, where's your principles of religion? Because Vritasura is a great devotee. Although he's in the demon body, he's a great devotee and he's preaching to the demigods, that don't be cowardly, stand and fight, let's fight. And then again when Indra came, Indra, the demigods had become powerful, then the demons were running away, and Vritasura was the only one left to face all the demigods. And Vritasura was saying to the demons, Come on, what happened to you? Why, why are you all running away? Stand and fight. To die on the battlefield is glorious. And when Srila Prabhupada was sick, Tamal Krishna Goswami was telling Prabhupada, he said, we want to take you back to America, Prabhupada, for preaching. And, and he quoted the verse from Bhagavad Gita where it says, to die on the battlefield is glorious. And Prabhupada said, yes, I want that benediction. I want to die on the battlefield. Two kinds of deaths are glorious. To die in a hospital on the ICU is not glorious. 
unless you have had a glorious life. You know, sometimes it happens, you know, devotees are glorious, but somehow, just somehow by the will of nature, it happened that they die untimely in a difficult situation. But it's stated in the scriptures that even if we cannot remember Krishna at the time of death, Krishna remembers his devotees. That is for sure. If, we, if the devotee had sacrificed his life for Krishna, even though he may die untimely in an in a inauspicious situation, Krishna does not forget him and Krishna will deliver him. So two glorious deaths. One is to die in samadhi, fixed mind, with your mind fixed on the absolute truth. And the other glorious death, to die on the battlefield. So for the devotees, the battlefield is preaching Krishna consciousness, to go out and distribute Krishna consciousness. That is glorious. That's a nice way to give up the body. Uh, we have to understand how to practice religious principles. We see sometimes these the Buddhists and the Jainis also, they give a lot of importance to Ahimsa. But Bhagavad Gita spoken on a battlefield. Some people say, yes, Ahimsa, non-violence, it's, it's very good. Even I think Mahatma Gandhi was advocating, you know, Ahimsa, non-violence. But Bhagavad Gita is spoken on a battlefield and Krishna wants Arjuna to fight. That is the highest principle of religion, to surrender to Krishna and to carry out the order of Krishna, Lord Sri Krishna. That is greater than any kinds of so-called non-violence. So the, the highest principle of religion is to surrender to Krishna and to understand what Krishna wants us to do. Not just simply practice non-violence. So, so many things they do to, you know, the Jains, they have ahimsa silk and they also wear the mask. Of course, so many people wear masks nowadays, you know. Everywhere people have masks and filter the water and do so many things. Only don't eat anything which grows below the ground. Trying to avoid, oh, now first month of Chaturmasya, don't eat green leafy vegetables because there's some insects at this time during the rainy season. So it's not good to kill the insects so we don't eat green leafy vegetables for one month. And this is, you could say, some measure of non-violence. But the much better approach is to use violence in the service of Krishna, on behalf of Lord Krishna. And, and Pra Prabhupada also explains that sometimes violence is justifiable. In Manu Samhita, it describes a murderer should be hanged. Well, people say, oh, no, it's not good, that's violence, to hang some. But Manu Samhita said, murderers should be hanged. If you don't hang them, they, if you don't kill them, then next life their karma will be much worse. So it's an act of mercy to kill the murderer. Sometimes there may be disturbance within a country and the government will have to resort to violence to establish law and order. That is an act of violence, but it's justifiable to re-establish peace within the country. Sometimes the mother will have to tell the child, if you don't behave properly, I'll get violent with you. Right? <laughs> the mother may threaten the child, behave or else we'll beat you. So sometimes violence is necessary. There is proper use of violence. And here, Lord Krishna is explaining to Arjuna, 
how to punish this uh, Ashwatthama. What should be done with him? Because he's the son of a Brahmana, son of Dronacharya. So to kill him is not very good, to actually kill him. But there are other ways to kill him. So th this is uh, Lord Krishna directing Arjuna to make the proper judgment how to deal with this situation. We see again and again how Arjuna is very thoughtful and careful. He, he doesn't act rashly. Everything is, he considers what should be done. Just like on the battlefield at Kurukshetra. Should I fight or should I not fight? And here again, Lord Krishna is there with him. Lord Krishna is there to guide him. And he's read, he's hearing from Krishna. Right? We know how in Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna had said that I'm confused about my religious duty. Huh? That verse, second chapter, text number seven. Uh, karpanya dosho pahata swabhava prichami chvam dharma samudha cheta. Right? Dharma samudha cheta. Arjuna is saying, I'm confused about my religious duty. Therefore, what do you do when you're confused about your religious duty? Karpanya dosho pahata swabhava prichami tvam dharma samudha chetas yet shreyas chanishchitam bruhi tanme shishasteham sadimam tvam prapanam. When we are confused about our duty, then become a surrendered disciple and ask the teacher, ask the guru, just like Arjuna asks Krishna. Shishasteham sadi mam twam prapanam. I am your disciple, a soul surrendered to you. Please instruct me. So take instruction. Don't act rashly. Don't just impulsively do things, but always be guided. Even though the situation may be very extreme, just like in this particular case, Arjuna has seen his son along with the sons of his brothers, all killed in the night, in the most irreligious manner. So certainly Arjuna would be very angry, and he was, he was very angry. His eyes were like copper, he was so angry at this Ashwat. But still, he brought him to Krishna and took guidance from Krishna how to punish him. So that is how we should conduct our religious duties under the guidance of the spiritual authorities. Okay, are there any questions? Comments? Yes, Prabhu. In every yuga, there are Kshatriya Brahman. No, the question is uh, the Kali, the Kali personification. Uh, he came as a uh, as a Shudra. So the question is ki every yuga that we see, Sat Yuga, Dwapar, Treta. So they are also personification of a Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya. Who? The p personification of Sat Yuga. The personification of Satya Yuga. Just like uh, the Kali is the Shudra. He was the personification of Kali, not Kali Yuga, but the personification of Kali at the time of irreligion. He was the agent of irreligion. 
he'd come to spread irreligious activities in the Sikh society. So it's not that in every age there's some personification of each age. Not that he was just simply a, the personification of Kali Yuga, so you think there must be personification for the other ages. No, not like that. But he was the, the agent for irreligious activity. He was Kali personified. Kali is the time of irreligion. And he'd come to propagate, to promote it. So Maharaj Yudhisthir, Maharaj Parikshit rather, dealt with him. Was ready to kill him, but because he surrendered. But it doesn't actually say he was a Sudra, but he said look like a Sudra, could have been a Sudra. We don't know, but he's definitely some irreligious parent. It could be even lower than the Sudra. Of course, we have, a, we have a lot of people lower than sudras. Sudra is in the Vedic culture, within the Vedic system. But if you are Chandala, or Rakshasa, or Malecha, Yavana, all these different names, you know, they're not within the Vedic, you know, they're outside the social system. They're not even sudra. The Sudra, at least he will follow the Vedic culture to some extent. He will take instruction from higher authorities. Right? But uh, people from outside the Vedic culture, they, they will eat everything. They don't care about religious principles. You know, we often demise people, we credit, yo, it's, it's a sudra, that person, they're sudras, this is sudra. But at least su sudra is a lot better than being a, <laughs> a rakshasa or a yavana or a chandala or something like that. That's much worse, right? So... Uh, so the personification of the age of Kali coming to promote all sinful activities, the religious principles. We are trying to promote religious principles. We're trying to encourage people, be a vegetarian, enjoy nice vegetarian foodstuffs. But people are so ignorant, oh, they think, Oh, you poor people, you don't have any money to eat meat. And people even think that, oh, people who don't eat meat is because they're poor. They cannot afford to purchase meat. And that's why they eat meat. But when you get more money, then you'll eat meat. They're thinking like that. They're so ignorant, so foolish. They're thinking, oh, you have no money to take drugs or to have alcohol. No, it's only for wealthy people who do these things. You, you can see the effect, how contaminating material wealth is, how it pollutes the whole thinking and the consciousness of people. And they think irreligious activities are the paramdrisva. They're thinking, the, uh, even in the, the Chaitanya Bhagavat, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was with Lord Nityananda and they were going to Shantipur. And on their way to Shantipur, they met this one man. He looked like a sannyasi. He had on saffron robes and he had a beard and long hair. And they saw his house was over there and they saw there was a woman there. So he was, you know, he was with a woman, although he was in saffron robes, he was with a woman. And the man kept saying to Nityananda and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he said, come and have some enjoyment with me. Come and have some, let's enjoy together. I have some Ganga Jao, real Ganga Jao. He said, I have some real Ganga Jao, come and enjoy with me. And Lord Chaitanya was looking at, and he asked Lord Nityananda, what's he talking about? And Lord Nityananda said, he wants us to drink alcohol with him. So even in the Chaitanya Bhagwat, 500 years ago, these 
tendencies were there, and it's much more prominent today. People are so fallen, so irreligious. They joke, they think, this is the real enjoyment. This is the paramdrisva. So we, we're trying to purify the consciousness of people, try to give them some real knowledge and understanding. Just imagine how difficult it must have been for Prabhupada going to America. And in, in America, nobody was vegetarian in those days. So, so much, so, so difficult. Prabhupada was living there in the lower east side, in the poor area of New York, the poor area where people were all often penniless and they were, they were, some people were alcoholics and drug addicts. Prabhupada had to confront all of these things in order to establish Krishna consciousness. So we're trying to promote religious activities. The symbol of religion is the bull, Dharma. And the Dharma bull stands on four legs. The four legs, uh, Satyam, Sojam, Daya, Tapa, Satyam, Truthfulness, socham, cleanliness, daya, mercy, and tapa, austerity. And that's why we follow four principles. Because these four principles support the pillars of religion. Just like this building, there are foundations, there are pillars to support it. So also religion. There are pillars, the foundation is there. Satyam, Socham, Daya, Tapa. But in the Kali Yuga, there's only a fraction of truthfulness remaining. All the other principles are gone, practically destroyed. Everywhere. I was doing question and answer booth in Calcutta, at a Rathiatra there in Calcutta. And so people would come, so I would ask them many times, so, so are you vegetarian? And it's so surprising how, how few people are vegetarian today, even though they come to the Rathiatra. Sometimes people say, well, well, almost vegetarian, you know, <laughs> you know, you know, you know these kind of things, you know. Well, nearly vegetarian. <laughs> like that. People know they should be vegetarian. They just don't do it. They say, well, I have to work, you know. I'm working with all these people and all my friends in the office. They're all meat eaters, you know. So I eat with them. I go with them to eat, you know. We all work together. I have to go for lunch with them. So we eat together. This is the unfortunate situation in the so-called modern age. We are thinking modern. Yes, very modern, fast, fast path to hell. Very quick road into hell. Just keep following all these modern people. Yeah, any other question? Okay, so then we will stop here. Srila Prabhupada ki, Srimad Bhagavatam ki, Gaur Premanande, Haribo.